today we will talk about the spinal cord injury which is a very common problem and a very devastating uh, and disabling problem uh, and uh, unfortunately we could not get too much uh, improvement in our treatment models and the in the last 10 20 years but there are some hopes on it and uh, i want uh, to start our webinar with dr eric osorio fonseca uh, from uh, colombia uh, he's a very uh, distinguished speaker and very well known person in in south america uh, he will talk about early management and intensive care of the spinal cord injury. Uh, yes, Eric, you can you can share your screen. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mehmet, uh, uh, for this kind invitation, and uh, I will share my. Okay. Okay, this uh, is uh, really a very important problem in the world. And uh, let me see what's happening here. Okay. And uh, you see the, the global incidence of traumatic spinal injury is 10.5 cases for uh, 100,000 persons in new cases annually. You see here in this graphic, from three to 14 cases for uh, 100,000 persons, more of them in the, uh, in the low and middle in, uh, income countries, like you see here in the, in the graphic. And the, the causes of SCI are motor vehicle accidents in 40% of the cases, falls in 21%, violence 15%, sports related 13%, children's sports 24%, and water recreational in 15% of the cases. And the location of the spinal cord injury are more in the lumbar spine in 37% of the cases, in cervical in 29%, in thoracic 24%, and sacral 10% of the cases. And the, the pre-hospital findings are lumbar pain in 37% of the cases, head injury 36%, Altered mental status, 31%, cervical pain, 15%, neurological deficit in 15%, and spinal tenderness in 8% of the cases. And uh, we use the important uh, uh, scales to classify uh, the spinal cord injury are the ASIA. Asia impairment scale that these are going to the A to E and A this complete lesion uh, uh, complete lesion of the of the medulla with uh, not sensory or motor function is preserved in the sacral segment S4 S5 and until E that is normal not sensory or motor function uh, are, are involved. And the other scale is the spinal cord independence measure three grading. This is more complex uh, scale. And uh, really for the ASIA scale is recommended as the preferred clinical evaluation tool for a good acute neurological assessment in patients with SCI. And the SIM three may be preferred to, access, to assess the functional abilities and impairment in the follow-up of patients with chronic SCI. 
and this is another scale, uh, will be preferred to evaluate the pain and chronically injured patients. Uh, the spinal cord we can define as primary lesion due to the trauma itself, a spinal cord contusion or compression, and secondary due to the flu, blood flu reduction, interruption, or inflammation cascade and edema. And the treatment goal is to reverse neurological injury, avo avoiding secondary injury and stabilize the spine column if it's necessary. The pre-hospital manage, the goal is to reduce neurological deficit and prevent any additional loss of neurological function and should include the primary evaluation of ABC, the secondary assessment and treatment with oxygenation and airway, cardiovascular support, fluids resuscitation, and definitive and early care transport and admission to trauma center. The oxygenation and airway is very necessary, is important to continuous pull oximetry Preoxygenation with face mask with neck immobilized, orotracheal intubations. And if the saturation oxygen saturation persistently less than 90, you have to do that. Also, if you have low respiratory rate, also if you have a Glasgow scale less than nine. And if you have a lesion above C3, because lead to the amnetic, apneic respiratory arrest. And the tracheal intubation in an unstable spine, you have to evaluate the benefit against to the risk and to use manual in line stabilization of the cervical spine. And the cardiovascular support, uh, the neuro, neurogenic and hypovolemic shock above T5, you have to use at least a 14G for IV line and Trendelenburg position and correction of the hypotension as soon as possible. If you have uh, uh, um, systolic blood pressure less than 19, you have to correct immediately and to have at least 90 millimeters of uh, mercurium uh, of uh, medium arterial pressure. And if you have bradycardia and hypotension, because arterial and venous vasodilatation lead to, to a loss of sympathetic outflow. A drug like norepinephrine, with chron chron chronotropic and inotropic effects, as well as a vasoconstrictor proprieties may be required. And crystalloid, with the fluid re resuscitation, the crystalloid at the election, prefer an NCL or Ringer. The colloids is not uh, too much uh, uh, used because the anaphylaxia reports and also the uh, coagulation blood effects. When use the hypertonic hyperosmotic solutions in SCI combined with multiple trauma and persistent hypotension, you can use the hypertonic uh, hyperosmotic solutions. The transportation and immobilization of patients with cervical spine trauma is very important. The primary concern during the initial EMS management in cases of potential cervical spine trauma is to prevent the secondary injury due to the possible pathological motion of the injured spine during patient transportation and medical treatment. About three to 25% of secondary spinal cord injuries occur either during transit or early management. And remember that the 20% of the patients die before admitted to the hospital. 
patients with SCI. And there are the, the, the immobilization, the, the, the four types of immobilization. The manual inline stabilizations, like you see here in A1 and A2 in this scheme, this is in line immobilization of the spinal cord. Uh, cervical spinal cord. And minimal immobilization is with this type of collar, like uh, name it also Philadelphia uh, collar. And uh, the immobilization in 30 degrees supine position without cervical collar, like, like you see here, more in patients with also uh, cranial uh, traumatism and complete immobilization of the spine, like you see, complete immobilization of the head and the spine, like you see in this, in this case. And uh, this scheme is very interesting because how transportate the patients? If you have, how to guarant guarantee the airway and cervical protection? Uh, if it's possible, and I think in all cases have to be possible to guarantee the airway and to do only with manual in lie stabilizations and has to be continued to do during all manipulations on the patient. And in cases for the circulation, if the circulation is unstable and uh, you have a penetrating trauma, not immobilization is recommended, but is in a the circulation is unstable, but you have a blunt trauma, you have to do minimal immobilizations and early transport should, should not be delayed. And if you have a, a disability in D, and uh, also with traumatic brain injury with increase of the intracranial pressure, you have to immobilize immobilization with the upper body elevate 30 degrees and without cervical collar that uh, we 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 saw in the here with this kind of immobilization immobilization and uh, if you have a lesion with this position and there is inestable you use only a minimal immobilization and if you is stable, but uh, you have a, a impaired assessment because a language barrier, intoxication, or serious distraction. Uh, if uh, you have this, you have to do complete immobilization. But if you have not this problem, you have you you cannot to do immobilization. And. Uh, the recommendations for transportation and immobilization of the patient with cervical spine trauma after arriving to the hospital, collar immobilization may be discontinued in the alert asymptomatic patients following normal MRI obtained within 48 hours of injury. Dynamic X-ray can be excluded from the list of the options for investigation in the attended Patient collar immobilization may be discontinued after negative high quality CT spine CT, CT scan. And symptomatic patients with normal CT scans should proceed to MRI. And early surgical intervention, eight to 24 hours after cervical traumatic spinal cord injury may lead to a better functional outcome of affected individuals. And uh, in conclusion, we need to do initial a clinical assessment in acute spinal cord injury with ASIA scale and to assess functional abilities and impairment in the follow-up of the patient with chronic SCI with the SIM3 uh, scale. We need to do a primary evaluation of the ABC secondary assessment and treatment with oxygenation and airway preservation, cardiovascular support, fluids resuscitation, and adequate and fast transportation to a specialized center. 
Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Eric. Uh, it was a great uh, introduction to our uh, spinal cord injury, actually prevention and, uh, uh, and good transportation are different, uh, are really very important uh, aspects of the injury. Are there any questions uh, from the audience? Wilco, do you do you wish to say something? Yes, I have a question. Uh, thank you, Enrique, for a nice uh, presentation. Um, I have a question. Uh, the trauma, general trauma surgeons, are in several countries um, obviating the need for a collar uh, in the first trajectory. So it's in my country, and I say also one of the countries uh, besides me. So um, I've tried to fight it. What do you think about it? So. So the general trauma surgeon, emergency doctors say that the color is not necessary in an awake patient. Yes, uh, if it's, it's only necessary if you have a like I show you the uh, if you have a, a also a a, a a polytrauma with uh, trauma craniocephalic trauma, you don't have to use really. It really, you need to 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 use the collar only in a few in a few in a few uh, cases, like I show. But uh, in the the majority of the cases, you don't need it. Yeah, I agree with that. Oh, the only thing is that the people who are seeing the patients on the streets they differ in the quality of training, so that might be an issue uh, in several countries. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, as I know, there are certain uh, criteria for clearance of uh, cervical trauma. Uh, for that clearance, before uh, making a clearance, uh, we must apply a cervical collar. Like if there is a, a tetraparesis and we haven't done any, any CT scan, anything yet, uh, or if a patient is unconscious, we must apply it all in those patients, I think. What do you think? Yes, I agree. Yeah, of course. Yeah. If there is no other question, 